bow our heads and join our hearts in prayer. Our dear Lord, we thank you for your priceless sacrifice on the cross. And that is the reason why we are all here today. It's because of Jesus, who he is, that he is the Son of God, our Messiah, our Savior and Lord. What he's done, that he has lived a perfect, sinless life. To die on the cross for his enemies. And those who believe in him, Become children of God, adopted into His family. That they would have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift of grace that is now made available to all of us here. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing in our lives. And once again, we remember what you did and we look forward to when you will come again. So in the church of old ages, we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. Return. We await our King, our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Let's all praise God. You may be seated. Now once again, if it's your first time to join us here at CCF, we welcome you. If you have any questions or if you want to know more about what Christ did, about the good news, feel free to join us at the Welcome Center right after the service. Well, one of the things that we do in CCF is to cultivate a lifestyle of worship that is really all about the heart. And so we have come here today with one announcement that is really going to enhance and help us to worship the Lord. Just sang a few songs, and one of our worship songs here at CCF, maybe one of your favorites also. Maybe you've heard of these titles, A Heart of Worship, or Blessed Be Your Name, or 10,000 Reasons. Now, we are so glad to announce that a friend of ours, Matt Redmond, the worship leader and composer of these songs, and many others, will be coming to Manila this April here at the CCF. Center. We are so excited for this because we will have an amazing night of worship led by Matt Redman on April 24 at 6 p.m. And this Praise and Worship concert is open to all and you can get your tickets at ticketmax.ph. Now if you're a volunteer of our worship ministry, Exalt or Music, want to be more equipped as you serve, Matt and his team will hold a worship seminar and band master class on the day before, April 23 at 6 p.m. So tickets for this are also available at ticketmax.ph. So please, get your tickets now, and let's worship the Lord together. By the way, it's the first time that Matt Redman will lead and come to the Philippines. So we are so excited to worship and to be ministered to by this man of God here in our country. So we praise the Lord for this opportunity. Now, as we come together once again, let us all arise and read the scriptures together in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, and chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. Together as one church, let us all read this scripture. Since you have, in obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable, that is, to the living and enduring Word of God. Chapter 4, verse 7. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another. Because love covers a multitude of sins. May the Lord add blessing to the reading and understanding of this word. And let us all once again pray and dedicate this service to Him. Father God, we thank you for this time that we worship you in spirit and in truth. That we have come here together as one church assembled all over the country and all over the Why world. Why only one church? Yeah. To worship you. Why did he say the word church? More and more of your love 
for us. We once again thank you and we commit this time to you from beginning eh? to end that you One will teach church, us. Ollie. That everyone here would experience your presence here right now. And we pray, Lord, that you would fill your servant, our speaker, Pastor Ricky, today, that you will override his preparation, that you will teach him what to say and what not to say, and that you will just lead him with this message that you have desired to speak to all of us here. And we pray, Lord, that as a result of this preaching, that we would rediscover your love, that your love would be made refreshing, renewing to all of us here, that we may be transformed to be more like Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we commit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. Let's welcome Pastor Ricky. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Shall we appreciate Pastor Mike, yeah? Pastor Mike, yeah? is one of the young pastors who we uh, appointed last year and I'm privileged to be serving alongside him. He reminds me that once upon a time I also had dark hair and a dark beard. Mike, But Mike, so Pastor Mike's burden is to develop men for Jesus. His burden is also to develop young leaders for Jesus and his other burden is to help CCF become uh, a place of prayer. So would you keep Ma uh, Pastor Mike, his wife, Yvette, and their family in your prayers as well, okay? Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Love Rediscovered. Why are we in this series to begin with? Well, many people in this world think they understand what love is, and I'm sorry to say that the majority of them are wrong. A lot of people are confused as to what love is. They don't even understand what it really is. And therefore, for those reasons and more, you and I need to rediscover love according to the one who invented it in the first place. The author of love is not some romantic songwriter. The author of love is God himself. So we need to go back to the manual of the author to understand and rediscover what love is. Now in the last Wait, few I need messages, to bring something. it's almost as if we were interviewing the subject matter experts about love. You know, it's like a, a, an interview on a podcast. And if you look at the previous messages, we interviewed, so to speak, as far as love rediscovered, according to, first of all, I'm getting a from a Color combination or whatever. Why we need to rediscover love. And principally it's because his people, his followers, need to be known not by how much Bible we know or how many verses we can recite or how perfect our church attendance is. We should be known, Jesus said, by what? It's a four-letter word, but it's the best four-letter word in the universe. Love. We should be known by love. That's the why we are rediscovering love. And then the next two messages, love rediscovered according to Paul, we heard about being loved in love is action. Love is kind, love is patient, love is not arrogant, not boastful, does not seek its own, etc. etc. Very down to earth, very practical, but also impossible to execute without the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we heard some more. Last Sunday we heard about love rediscovered according to James. And James says we need to love what? Radically. Rad you know, when you hear the word radical, one of the things that comes to your mind is the, the word extreme. And that's exactly uh, how James was describing love in our so-called interview with him. Again, it was a how about the words that we say, about loving people more than ourselves. Today, we're going to go back to the why. It's always important to ask ourselves, okay, having learned all these things so far, and hopefully applying them in our lives, why am I doing this again? Because when it, when it gets difficult to love certain people, you might need to step back and say, wait, Lord, why are you having me do this? Can you remind me? That's what we're going to do today. Why is it important that we rediscover love according to the Bible? Okay, let me take you back to 1967. Yes, there was a year called 1967.
1967. How many of you were already people in 1967? Hindi in Tagalog, Brother Alex, please raise your hand with me. Yes, thank you. Um, how many of you remember the Beatles? Oh yeah, you don't have to be born in 1967 to remember the Beatles, right? Okay. In 1967, they released a hit single called All You Need Is Love. And there's a special reason why they released this single. Yeah, and it was a, a, a technological marvel because in 1967, they performed the song All You Need Is Love in a studio live which was beamed by satellite to 25 countries and seen by 400 million people. We're talking 1967. Now, why was it so important for them to write this song and have them have so many people in the world listen to it? If you remember the song, it's very, very simple. The, the, the chorus goes, all you need is love, all you need is love, all you need is love, Love is all you need. Simple enough? There's a reason why they wrote it that way. So that even non-English speaking people will get the message. Now why did they write a simple song about love that almost anyone in the world could understand? You and I need to go back to what was happening in the world in 1967. You had the Vietnam War. You had the Cold War between the U.S. and Russia. You, you even had the six-day Arab-Israeli war. So there was a lot of anger, there was a lot of tension, there was a lot of division in the world at that time. Does it sound like the world today? Nothing new under the sun, the Bible says. It's probably even worse today than it was in 1967. And so the reason why you and I need to rediscover love according to the Bible is because in the Bible we have the simplest, most beautiful love song ever written. It was not by the Beatles. It was by God himself. And that most simple and most beautiful love song ever written is the gospel of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You like that love song? Let's praise God for being the best songwriter in the universe. That's why we need to rediscover love. Now who will be our interviewee this morning? Love according to whom? We're going to learn the views and experience of this man. Do you know who this is? That's Peter, the fisherman. What does he have to say to us about love? From the two letters he wrote, and of course from his own experience of how he rediscovered love in his relationship with Jesus. So a little bit of a background, first of all. In 1 Peter chapter 1, he writes, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as aliens scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen. So Peter was writing to God's people, to followers of Jesus Christ, who were scattered all over the place. It was a very difficult time for Christians then, a time of persecution, a time of, well, a, 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 a time of loss for many of them. Many of them were impoverished because of the persecution against them. And he was reminding them, yes, this world is not our home. We are aliens in this world. We have a much better home to look forward to. And then he also reminded them, you are chosen. God chose you divinely, supremely, sovereignly to be part of his family. And the question is, why did he choose you? Why did he choose you and me to be his followers? And he explains, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, in other words, we don't become Christians by Read walking it, into this place. Read it. We become Christians oh, by faith oh, in Jesus and the indwelling Jesus of the Holy Spirit. Christ, Purpose to obey Jesus Christ. A 
as aliens at the throughout. What? Can you read it? Peter and an oppose of Jesus Christ to those who reside as aliens scattered throughout Wantus Galatia Galatia Kappa Cappadocia Cappadocia Asia and Bithynia who are chosen according to the the for knowledge of God the Father by the by sanctifying by the sanctifying work of the Spirit to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his body may grace and peace be yours in the fullest Grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Measure. So, Good job. We have been, we are aliens in this world. We have been chosen by God to obey Jesus Christ. Now, in what specific aspect did Peter say we should obey Jesus? He mentioned many things. You know what? If you read First and Second Peter, you don't hear him say too many things about love. Unlike, for example, the Apostle John in the book of the letter of 1 John. So he didn't mention love too many times. But what he did mention should mean a lot to us this morning. So he said, we are here to obey Jesus. What did he say in chapter 4, verse 8? He said, above all. By the way, when you see the phrase above all, what does that mean? Finally, most important, if you haven't been listening, you need to listen now. That's what above all means. He says, above all, there's no battery. Fervent. There's even no battery. Fervent. That's our key word this morning. Huh? Above all, he says, most importantly, listen to this. Pay attention. Keep fervent in your life. Uh, why are you Over doing quietly? Because love covers a multitude of sins. What does the word fervent why? mean? Why? The word fervent means earnest. There's a sense of urgency. There's an energy behind it. Zealous. Stretched to its maximum potential. So in many ways, maybe Peter and James Why do we from each other support love radically. Now here we're being told to love fervently. That's our message for this morning. But it's okay because both of them, even if they copy from each other, they were both copying Jesus. Amen? Now, this, this word fervent stretched to its maximum potential. <clears throat> uh, looking at its original meaning, if you were to put it in a picture, it would be this. It would be athletes straining to finish a race. Do you see the strain in the muscles of these athletes? Are, are, they, are they running like, you know, enjoying the park and... No, they're, they're like dead serious. Their, their mind is so focused, I've got to finish this race. So you can see the zeal and the enthusiasm. So keep this picture in your mind as we talk about our message this morning. Our message today is love fervently. And there are three reasons. Remember, that's the how, fervently. Stretched to its maximum potential, earnestly, zealously, but before we're going back to the why. Three reasons, at least, Peter gives us based on his letters, <clears throat> as well as based on his life, why you and I should love fervently. Number one is new identity. We are new people in Jesus. We're no longer who we used to be. So hot. Second is short time. Life is short. Even the life of this earth is short. You and I are not going to live forever on this earth, and this earth is not going to last forever either. And the third reason is what? Genuine forgiveness. Peter was the recipient of genuine forgiveness, and he reminds us fervent love is expressed or requires genuine forgiveness. So let's begin. The first one, why should we love fervently? Because of a new identity. Peter 
said, <clears throat> going back to verse uh, chapter 1, Since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere love for the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. You see, this is the second time he said this. He described love as needing to be what? Fervent. So he said, you have in obedience to the truth purify your souls. Uh, meaning to say, as you and I obey God on a daily basis, it has a purifying effect on our life, on our motives, why we do things, and that is, of course, ultimately to please Jesus. It is the daily practice of the Christian life. And he said, since you are doing this, since you are obeying the truth, he says, fervently love one another from the heart. From the heart, meaning intentionally, genuinely. Why? Again, we go back to the why. Hair. Why should you and I love one another? It's a golden hair. For you have been what? What did you say? You know some people are allergic to the term born again. Maybe many of us, even I, was allergic to the term born again. You know, we kind of made fun of that term like born against. Have you ever heard that before? Uh, what are you now, born against? Or some people would say burn again. Right? If you, if you don't subscribe to whatever is a popular religion, you become a born again Christian, you, they, they tell you you are burned again. Folks, born again is not a religion. Born again is not a group. Born again is what happens from the inside out where you enter into a relationship with Jesus. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But anyway, we say you need to love one another first. Why did he say inside out? Again. You're a new person right. in Christ. Why did he say inside out? But imperishable. Uh, because why is this important? Well, later I explain to you. Uh, a little bit of a detour back to Paul from two Sundays ago. He said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, meaning in a relationship with Christ, surrender completely to Jesus as Lord and Savior. And therefore, if anyone is in that situation in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creature, a new creation. Folks, the Christian life is not about being a, a slightly better person. The Christian life is not about just New Year's resolutions. The Christian life is about being a completely new person and living according to that newness. He says, the old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word new means fresh, unused, unprecedented, unheard of. In other words, if you are in a relationship with Jesus today, you are totally not the same person you were before. Now you might say, how come I still have so many of my old bad habits? You are growing into who you are in Christ. That's why we need to obey Him daily and be empowered by the Holy Spirit. But positionally speaking, in terms of your identity, you are no longer who you used to be. You are fresh, unprecedented. Who you are today was unheard of in terms of your old life. You know, when I was looking at this definition of fresh, how many of you, you like the smell of a new car? Have you ever smelled the smell of a new car? Yeah, you like the smell of a new car? Or am I the only one? I love the smell of a new car. A few days ago, I was picked up by a, a, a new car, and I, put, I drove in the car, and I said, wow, this is fresh. Maybe I'm the first passenger. Or maybe you go to a, a showroom. Right? And you open the door and there's this new car smell. You know, sometimes I wish they would invent a cologne or a perfume. New car cologne. You like that? And you spray yourself and then when you pass by people, they'll say, Oh, he must have written in a new car. <laughs> but, but that's the whole idea. It's like fresh and brand new. Now, 
It's so good in color combination. Can you see? So beautiful, no? But don't put a line like this, okay? Wait lang, I, I will uh, picture it. It's so beautiful, my Julia, no? See? It's so good in color combination. Half of the shoes. And then the... Then the crown. Is that crown? One crown. And then the shoes, beautiful shoes, beautiful dress, beautiful hair. And beautiful wings. Yeah. Can I take a picture with Kuya? Show, it's not your dad. Show, show, your, uh, show not your masterpiece. I will take a picture. And it's then you hold like dad. this. Yeah, hold like this. It's okay. Gian, you hold yours. Okay, you smile. My son, you smile. I, you, beautiful smile. Don't cover your mouth. You, smile. you down pa. Okay, smile. I will take a picture. It's enough. Okay, na. Thank you.